Good afternoon. Welcome everyone, babas and nyonyas, ladies and gentlemen, to our State Chinese Spinning Association's International Centennial Colloquium. Before we begin our colloquium, I would like to invite Dr. Tan Kim Soon, the organizing chairman and president of State Chinese Penang Association, to give his welcoming speech. The State Chinese Penang Association should have celebrated our 100th year anniversary in the year 2020. We had made numerous plans for a most memorable and awesome centennial celebrations of all times. But everything came to a standstill in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. Regardless, we are most grateful that our members are still faithful and staying true to their heritage and traditions in spite of these unforeseen circumstances. One event that had been put off quite a number of times is our International Centennial Colloquium, which was scheduled to be held in 2020, but had to be put off due to the restrictions brought about by the MCO. Theme, knowing our past, charting our future. It is hoped that through this colloquium, the State Chinese Penang Association will be able to convey further insights into its unique culture and identity. On behalf of the State Chinese Penang Association, I would like to invite each and every one of you to stay tuned to our Facebook page on the 20th of March to participate in this event. You can also tune in to our YouTube channel later for an experience you will never forget. Our esteemed speakers will share with you their interesting experiences as they journey from the past glories of our forefathers and continue to charge their path into the future. Kam sia kokwe, kam sia jeje, kam sia luang e jiji. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan, for your speech. Now I would like to invite Yang Ahmad Berhumat Tuan Chao Kun Yao, Chief Minister of Penang, to deliver his keynote speech. To all members of the State Chinese Penang Association, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, allow me to congratulate the State Chinese Penang Association, SCPA, for the International Centennial Collegium via an online platform on 20th March to mark your 100th anniversary. As the saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. It is as such most commendable that the State Chinese Penang Association had taken positive steps towards the preservation and propagation of your unique Peranakan heritage and culture despite the COVID-19 pandemic. One thing which the pandemic had taught us is in spite of the physical limitations imposed on our activities, we can, through our own innovation and creativity, carry on with our daily life and programs in the new normal. And your colloquium is definitely an example which stands out in this regard. I was told that this colloquium will involve distinguished speakers, not only from within Malaysia, but also from across the globe. Moreover, it is also aptly themed, knowing our past, charting our future, which to me means enlightening your members of their past 
in order to help them succeed in the future. I am greatly pleased that in today's rapidly changing society, efforts have been made to ensure the young do not forget their roots and to help them fit in and excel in new evolving circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yang Ahmad Burhumat Tuan Chao Kunya, for your speech. Moving on, I would like to introduce our moderator for this colloquium, Mr. Jack Ong Chong Tek. Mr. Jack Ong Chong Tek was country head of several Southeast Asian countries for a UK based multinational organization before retiring after an international career in banking and finance. He subsequently joined the Penang State Heritage Agency to pursue his personal passion for heritage conservation. He conceived and directed numerous projects during his tenure there, specifically the documentation and publication of several books and brochures on the various aspects of Penang's tangible and intangible heritage. These included Georgetown's her historic commercial and civic precincts, Epita, the Northern Road Protestant Cemetery, Heritage Traders of Georgetown, the Clan Jetties of Georgetown, etc. Mr. Ong is a committee member of the State Chinese Penang Association, as well as past honorary secretary and council member of the Penang Heritage Trust. He is a descendant of the families of Ong Tri Gim Esquire of Ban Hin Estates and Chung Lai Hin Esquire of Hock Hin Brothers. Through his lineage, particularly from his father's side, Mr. Ong Penang Strait's Chinese family heritage traces back at least seven generations. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us at the State Chinese Penang Association's International Centennial Colloquium. We hope you will find the presentations and discussion insightful, thought-provoking and interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, social anthropologists have warned that the non-practice of a culture dooms it to extinction. Many examples globally have shown many communities where their culture and heritage are either diluted or eradicated when they do not use their languages or when they do not practice their traditional customs and legacies. We can therefore be comforted to know that the Peranakan Chinese in the past two to three decades have been enjoying a revival in the interest and adulation for our culture and heritage. Our cuisine is popular even amongst the other ethnicities and nationalities. Our artifacts like the embroidery, beadwork, jewellery and porcelain all fetch high prices at auction houses. Everyone is in awe of our rich and opulent rites, rituals and customs. We even have the grand annual Peranakan Conventions, hosted in turn by cities in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia and Singapore. All these augur well for the continuity and safeguarding of our unique cultural heritage. And for the foreseeable future, we can take comfort that the Peranakan Chinese culture will survive for at least a while more. So yay, great news, eh? However, we should remember that although we celebrate the culture of the Peranakan Chinese as a single entity, the community itself is spread across several countries in the region. We must accept that celebrating the uniqueness of our culture and heritage is not enough. It is equally, if not even more important, that each subgroup within is celebrated for their distinction from the other subgroups of the Peranakan Chinese. For this showcases the complexity and multi-layering 
of what is truly our rich and complex culture and heritage. Apart from the obvious fact that the community straddles various countries within the ASEAN region, there are also differences between the communities in one country. For example, the Hokkien-based patois spoken by the strict Chinese of Penang substantially differs from the Baba Malay patois spoken in Malacca. Many other aspects of the Penang strict Chinese differentiate this community from the rest. So, we may all be termed Peranakan Chinese, but we are certainly not all identical. In light of this, the State Chinese Penang Association has organized this International Centennial Colloquium as a keystone event to promulgate the concept of the unique identity of the Penang Strait Chinese within the general Peranakan Chinese community of the region. With the theme of knowing our past, charting our future, the colloquium will focus on the message of identifying the unique aspects of the Penang Strait Chinese culture and heritage. It will, in particular, stress on the importance of maintaining the differentiation in order to retain our unique cultural identity from that of the other Peranakan Chinese communities, lest the Penang Strait Chinese community completely loses itself, disappears, and be wholly assimilated into the Malu of the general Peranakan Chinese of the region. This is particularly important in view of the threats which are challenging the conservation of our culture and heritage. Many of the unique aspects of the Penang Strait Chinese are in danger of vanishing and going astray. Amongst the threats posed is that of Disneyfication. Disneyfication relates to the acts of transforming the presentation of a culture into a controlled and safe entertainment. Disneyfication ignores and removes the non-entertaining parts of it. It strips the culture out of its original character and represents it in a sanitized, or worst, in a made-up form. Disneyfication is typically encountered when a culture is transformed merely to entertain or to attract outsiders and tourists. It only presents a simplified and interesting experience. So we have these cultural practices glamorized and completely taken out of context. They are also typically performed for just the reasons of entertaining and to appear interesting. Such a practice wholly undermines and underrepresents the complexity of the community and its practices. The disnification of the culture certainly does not do justice to the Peranakan Chinese community. Another manifestation of disnification is cultural appropriation, or as some would call it, cultural misappropriation. It is especially galling when the cultural misappropriation is perpetuated by the supposed members of the community, who do so either unconsciously or worse, with willful ignorance. An example of this would be the cliched belief and practice that the bunga telang is used so commonly in Peranakan Chinese cuisine, where we see, for example, the kuei, sri muka, marbled blue, and served at celebratory functions like weddings and birthdays. This practice completely fails to understand the cultural belief that blue is the color for mourning and is only used when paired or topped in an auspicious color like the plot tai tai or plot inti, topped with the gold of the kaya and inti. These wrong practices are innocent enough when practiced by the community and discounted as cheap entertainment or done for fun and is recognized as such with no importance placed on them. However, they become very dangerous precedents when they are performed by members of the community as cultural practices celebrating the heritage of the community as they then grow to become accepted norm for its heritage and are then misguidedly accepted as the culture itself.
As a result of the disnification of the Peranakan Chinese culture, there has also been a tendency to generalize the various subgroups of the culture into a homogeneous one. As noted, all these subgroups have their own distinct identities, for example, in terminology, cuisine, dressing, and rites. However, due to acculturation, especially through the forces of the mass media and social media, many practices are now homogenized into that of those which have greater airplay and column inches. A good example of acculturation is the use of terms not from the Penang Street Chinese culture to refer to dress items of the nonias. The Penang Street Chinese use the terms Hua Teng Te, Mua, and Manae to refer to the nonias embroidered blouse, batik cloth, and beaded shoes. However, recent case has shown that the terms Kebaya and Sarong and Kasut Manet have come to replace these formerly common terms in daily usage. Should we not be vigilant, such Penang terms will cease to be understood and used and be lost to history. Such a scenario is identified as plaguing the what was once distinct identity of the straight Chinese of Penang, blurring the lines of what once celebrated the unique characteristics of this community from that of the other Peranakan Chinese of the region. At this juncture, I would like to stress, and it is crucial to note, that the Straits Chinese of Penang were much admired for our cultivated culture. A common belief from the early to mid 20th century had the Peranakan Chinese families of the region seeking Nonia brides from Penang, as it was said that the Penang and Nonia cut you. That is, the Nonias from Penang are more refined. This could be rooted in our Penang belief and practice of being more lape from the Malay word lapis, meaning layered, but specifically in the context of behavior and conduct, it means to be nuanced, mannered, and dignified. To be lape is not just in the material reflection of elegant and sophisticated costumes, furnishings, and the like, but encapsulates the whole approach to the lifestyle of speech, attitudes, and action. It has resulted in the raising of Babas and Nonias who were, and are, cultured and civilized. Ladies and gentlemen, in comportment, bearing, and behavior, refined and dignified, we are not loutish somethings, or coquettish courtesans and longing jabo. To be true, the refined and dignified Penang Straits Chinese is not exclusive to just wealthy members of the community. The larger middle class and even the working class Babas and Nonias also uphold the values of being lape, perhaps even more so, for grace and manners may mean even more under such circumstances. Therefore, it is safe to say that such values are inherently embedded within the whole community. It is important for the straight Chinese of Penang to remember and practice this value of Bin Lape in our daily lives, to be nuanced, decorous, and dignified, and of the esteem by which we are held by the other Peranakan Chinese communities. Ladies and gentlemen, we had planned for the SCPA International Centennial Colloquium to be celebrated in person by our members and friends. However, due to the global pandemic, we have moved it to the online platform. Perhaps this is even better, where we are now able to share this with the global audience. After this, a book will also be published to encapsulate the presentations of the speakers and this publication will also be available and disseminated to the international public. Georgetown has been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And as the trust of the colloquium is to educate and to reinforce the unique aspects of the Penang Straits Chinese culture, such documentation 
promulgation, archival, and celebration of the information is crucial in the safeguarding and conservation of the UNESCO-recognized outstanding universal values of multi-layered history and contemporary living multiculturalism of Georgetown and Penang. This is very much in line with the best practices as observed by World Heritage Sites globally. To this end, I would like to urge the Penang State Government through the Malaysian Federal Government to submit the heritage and culture of the Straits Chinese of Penang to UNESCO to be inscribed in the list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The eclecticism of our community certainly meets the selection criteria of two and three, where we exhibit an important exchange of human values over a span of time and within a cultural area of the world, as well as bearing a unique and exceptional testimony to a cultural tradition which is living. Penangites are proud of our hawker food and we think it is the best in the world. However, it is our Singapore neighbour who has succeeded in inscribing their hawker culture, whilst we are only starting to do so. Let us not wait until the Peranakan Chinese culture of other communities are similarly recognised as cherished global heritage before we start to gain this recognition for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, today, not only do we celebrate the centennial of the establishment of the State Chinese Penang Association, but we also celebrate what it means to be the Straits Chinese of Penang. I am confident that the information presented by our speakers will be invaluable. However, proceedings from one event will clearly not permit a definite course of action to move forward. What I would hope is that we use the information presented today as springboard to initiate even more conversations on matters that are important to the legacy of our heritage and culture. Hopefully, there will be an increase in research and documentation from the perspective of the Penang Straits Chinese. Let us remind ourselves constantly on what is our Penang identity. We should ask ourselves, is what we are doing to our culture and heritage today helping it in the long term? Are we overly disnifying for the sake of popular culture and acculturating from other communities? We should ask how we would like our heritage and culture to be in the future. We hope the events from today will initiate ongoing conversations on the identity of the Straits Chinese of Penang. Conversations rooted on knowing what it is really based on our past and know that we are the ones who will chart the direction for its future. To initiate future conversations on what it means to be a strict Chinese of Penang is what it is hoped this colloquium will ignite. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Kamsia. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate today to have four speakers who will be presenting on areas which are very much in their scope of knowledge. The first presenter, in fact, has even undertaken new research, particularly for her paper for this colloquium and spent a good part of 2020 in interviews and other research. I am honoured to introduce Professor Dr. Tengku Sopora, who will be presenting on the area of language and culture and how the decline of a language precipitates the death of its culture in relation to the Straits Chinese of Penang. 